Amprius is a lithium ion battery manufacturer. Our claim to fame is gravimetric energy density. At the 2025 battery show, interest grows around a booth where silicon anode technology is being discussed in depth. Many visitors gather to understand why this new approach matters for the wider battery industry. Across transportation, aerospace, robotics and defense, electrification continues to expand, and energy density has become one of the most valuable performance indicators in modern engineering. Companies in these fields constantly search for ways to improve the relationship between weight and stored energy. When a system becomes lighter, it travels farther, stays in the air longer, or carries a greater payload. For organizations that depend on long-range missions or compact designs, even a small gain can create a major advantage. Amprius operates directly within this space, where every gram influences real-world outcomes. In drone applications, a minor reduction in battery weight can extend flight time by several minutes. In aerospace, the benefit becomes even more dramatic. Long endurance aircraft operating at high altitude must maximize every watt hour without increasing mass, since thin air offers limited lift and demands careful energy planning. For these systems, a few percentage points of improvement can determine whether a mission succeeds or fails. Because of these challenges, the industry has spent decades trying to move beyond the limitations of graphite anodes. While graphite remains stable and predictable, it cannot hold enough lithium to meet the growing demands of next-generation devices. Silicon has been viewed for many years as the next major step in anode development because of its ability to store almost 10 times more lithium than graphite. However, most companies struggled to commercialize silicon due to its extreme swelling during charging. When silicon absorbs lithium, it expands dramatically, causing the anode to crack, crumble, and lose structural integrity. This reduces cycle life, raises safety concerns, and makes large-scale production extremely difficult. Amparius focused on solving this exact issue through nanoscale engineering. By building a controlled geometric structure, precisely shaped to expand without breaking, the company created a stable platform that maintains its integrity through repeated cycles. This approach allowed Amparius to achieve what many research teams attempted but could never bring into high volume production. This breakthrough also changed how engineers think about battery system design. A drone that once required multiple modules to complete a long mission can now fly the same route with a smaller pack. Extra weight saved from the battery can be reassigned to sensors, cameras, communications equipment, or improved onboard computing. In the world of high-altitude pseudo-satellites, mission endurance is often limited by energy storage. Because of this, the 67-day stratospheric flight completed by Airbus's Auto Division stands out as one of the clearest demonstrations of silicon anode potential. A mission of that length would have been impossible using standard lithium-ion cells, yet silicon made it achievable. Light electric vehicles benefit in similar ways. Many e-bikes, electric scooters, and compact delivery vehicles must stay as light as possible to maintain range and performance. Reducing battery mass improves acceleration, braking, top speed, and steering, while also increasing usable range. These products often operate in tight urban conditions and need to charge frequently, making durability important. Early testing from Amparias customers shows strong cycling performance due to the company's refined electrode design and material recipe. One of the most important advantages of the Amparius approach is the ability to produce the cells using standard lithium-ion manufacturing equipment. Many next-generation battery concepts require entirely new facilities, which can cost hundreds of millions of dollars and take years to build. In contrast, Amparius cells can be made using the same coating, slitting, calendaring, and assembly machines used for graphite cells. This compatibility gives contract manufacturers a practical and low-risk path to increase output without major factory upgrades. During the so-called EV winter, when many plants are running below full capacity, this flexibility becomes even more valuable. A factory that once depended solely on graphite-based products can now supplement production with silicon anode cells without rebuilding its lines. 
This capability also sets the foundation for global expansion. Amproyus works with contract manufacturing partners in China, Korea, and other regions soon to be announced. These partnerships contribute gigawatt hour scale capacity and reduce the time required for new product launches. A distributed model like this helps reduce supply chain risk and supports plans to source additional materials locally, such as electrolytes, binders and separators. This approach also gives manufacturers in multiple regions a chance to participate in the growth of next generation battery technology. The strong interest from the US Department of Defense highlights another important shift. Defense agencies have been searching for domestically produced, high-performance batteries that can support unmanned systems, long-endurance aircraft, advanced communication hardware, and distributed sensor networks. Silicon anode cells attract attention because they provide mission length, temperature resilience, and reliability that many current systems cannot match. The Defense Innovation Unit awarded Amprius $10.5 million to support the expansion of its Fremont pilot line, reflecting both confidence in the technology and an urgent national need to increase domestic capacity in advanced energy storage. After the pilot line expansion, the facility will give engineers the ability to make rapid design changes, run small batch prototypes, evaluate new electrolyte blends, and test experimental electrode configurations before sending finalized recipes to larger contract manufacturers. This system dramatically shortens innovation cycles. Instead of waiting months for pilots to run overseas, engineers can test results within days. The addition of electrode mixing and coating will transform the Fremont site into a complete demonstration facility, mirroring the structure of a full-scale commercial plant while operating at roughly 10 megawatt hours per year. Back at the booth, attention shifts to the physical cells on display. The pouch cells shown represent what customers can expect from the expanded pilot line. Their thin structure, lightweight housings, and uniform stacking reflect precision engineering focused on high performance and ease of integration. These cells can be placed into aircraft wings, drone fuselages, slim vehicle frames, or compact device housings. For many developers, the displayed cells provide a starting point for future product designs built around silicon anode performance. The crowd at the booth continues to grow as more visitors hear about the technology. Electric aviation companies discuss how lighter batteries can reduce takeoff weight and improve safety margins. Robotics developers consider how extended runtime can support autonomous missions, requiring long distance travel or continuous operation. Satellite and near space platform teams examine how the cells could survive cold temperatures and low pressure conditions. Even consumer electronics designers imagine how laptops, drones, or wearable devices could become lighter and more efficient with silicon anode cells. Industry analysts nearby compare silicon anode technology with other emerging battery systems. Solid state batteries, sodium ion designs, and advanced cathode chemistries all appear at the show, but silicon stands apart because it can be deployed using existing manufacturing lines. This makes it appealing to companies that prefer stable, predictable investment paths. Many firms hesitate to invest in exotic designs that require entirely new infrastructure, but silicon avoids this barrier. The technology fits well into the existing global ecosystem, allowing faster adoption and lower risk for manufacturers. Suppliers from the pack design, cooling, and power electronics fields also study the booth closely. Many note that a higher energy cell affects the entire system. Cooling plates may be redesigned to handle new thermal profiles. Enclosures might require stronger reinforcement to protect thin pouch structures during vibration or impact. Charge controllers and battery management systems may need updated algorithms to handle the unique behavior of silicon during fast charging and deep cycling. These discussions show how a chemistry improvement often reshapes design choices across an entire product line. Testing labs also add their perspective. Upcoming safety standards for aviation and defense require extensive certification, including vibration testing, temperature cycling, puncture resistance, and long-term storage analysis. Representatives from these labs express interest in how silicon anode cells behave under these conditions, noting that new technologies often introduce new approval pathways. 
As the day progresses, the booth becomes a center for discussions about the future of high energy storage. Silicon anodes are no longer viewed as a distant concept, but as a practical solution ready for deployment. The interactions at the show reveal growing confidence in the technology and anticipation for what silicon-based designs will enable across multiple industries. With government support, commercial adoption, and scalable manufacturing, silicon anode batteries appear poised to shape the next generation of electrified systems.